Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have poured upon us the new light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light enkindled in our hearts may shine forth in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with a robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as the garden causes what is sown to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest, until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. 
He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, this is the one of whom I said, he who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. But his fullness we have all received, grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth come through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Why? More than the catchy ad for Google this year, it remains perhaps the most penetrating of the questions we have. From our earliest days, we want to know how and even more why, and every parent can attest to this, and even Mr. Rogers made a song about it. It's part of what makes us who we each are. When we ask why, we are seeking to understand, to get a handle on something, looking for something concrete, clear, and even decisive. As we embrace and live into the miracle of the Incarnation, we tend to concentrate on what is more tangible and relatable, a baby. The fullness of the miracle of the Incarnation, the deeper context and the great why, is not found in a manger scene, however. That's what today's Gospel is all about, the great why. The opening lines of the good news according to John, this prologue, is not about infancy, but the miracle, the mystery of this, what is God's big idea for all of us. When you stop and consider what you read or hear in this prologue, it has it all. Poetry, mysticism, creation, redemption, and choice. The prologue is a hymn to the pre-existent Christ, the word who is light itself. It announces the stunning good news that those who believe can become children of God, adopted by grace. The prologue celebrates the abundance of the glory we have seen in Christ. These opening lines name the lived experience of believers as grace upon grace. The infancy accounts of Matthew and Luke are rich with symbol too, don't get me wrong, but the mystery is easier to miss in that story of shepherds, of a manger, of the couple, of a baby. If listeners don't get down beneath the narrative, it remains just a familiar story of Mary, Joseph, the child, a census, a trip to Bethlehem, no room at the end, you get the picture. But here in John's telling, however, the fullness of the mystery of God's action is front and center. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, the word was God. John will continue to use what appears to be simple and even stark opposition between two perspectives. Here, darkness and light, with a triumph of light over darkness, which is the essence of this good news. From this prologue, clear to the end of the gospel, John gives us a trajectory. From the dawn of time to the gift of salvation, John puts the whole enterprise together for us in this here's why of Christmas. Addressing why only propels us to a more direct question for you and me though. So what? So what will I do with this good news? So what or how will I, will I trust this message for my life? So what can my life become now, especially in 2021? It's been said, 
in a certain sense, we are all players in John's prologue. We're all the characters. Whether we embrace or reject the incarnate word in a way that we are not able to in the other tellings of the Christmas story. In the infancy narratives of Matthew and Luke, a child is born. In the prologue of John's gospel, believers are born, not by natural generation or by human choice nor by human decisions, but of God. As players in the story, there is an essential choice we hear in these words of John. Do we accept or ignore or even reject this news? The prologue of John's gospel names Christ's rejection outright. He came to what was his own, but his own received him not. So what or how will I trust this message now? From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. So what can my life become now? We have good news. Amen. Let us reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are form three, found on page 387 in the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who have commended themselves to our prayers, especially remembering this week Barbara, Bob, Eli, Jack, Jane, Jennifer, Jim, Julia, Meredith, Mike, Pax, Riley, Rob, Rosemary, Sandy, Seth, Susan, Terry, the Tollefson family, and all those affected by natural disasters and human tragedies, the first responders and the aid and relief efforts that continue around the world, especially for everyone affected by the coronavirus and recent storms and in all others who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may de be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed, especially Helen Tollefson, eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon her. We, raise you for your, we praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we come to share in your heavenly kingdom. We pray especially for peace in our homes and around the world remembering those who have lost their homes and families to violence here and abroad, as well as those who serve and protect our own freedom. 
especially Harrison, Matt, Becky, Jennifer, Steve, Philip, and Perrin, for their safety and the just use of the power that is placed in their hands. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. I invite your own petitions and thanksgivings offered at this time. Let us remember and pray for our pastoral care team and Stephen ministry. Caring God, thank you for how you call us to bring your light of hope and love to others. Continue to guide us in our care, especially with our Stephen ministers. Give those who feel they or someone close to them would benefit from a care-receiving relationship. The courage to ask for a Stephen minister to walk beside them. By your presence and Holy Spirit, continue to strengthen our Stephen ministers and leaders to provide the Christian caregiving that you have prepared them to do. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. <laughs>
Every fall, we have the opportunity to bless our pledges of our commitments of time, talent, and treasure. Due to the pandemic, we haven't had a chance to be able to gather up until now in terms of being able to celebrate those pledges and our commitment together. So we would like to take this opportunity to do so right before the Eucharist now. Let us pray. Come, Lord Jesus, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you will renew the face of the earth. Father in heaven, we thank you for the many blessings you have given to us. Help each one of us and each of our families to become good stewards of all your many gifts entrusted to us. In gratitude to you, we pledge our generosity in giving our time, talent, and treasure, indeed our very selves, for the accomplishment of your divine will in this place and beyond. Bless all of these offerings and pledges to your service. Lord Jesus, help us to manage faithfully the many gifts you have entrusted to our care and so to accomplish your vision for this portion of the people of God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we, we remember, remember his, his death, death we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, 
and bring us to that heavenly country where with Mary the God-bearer, Thomas, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let, let us, us keep, keep the, the feast. feast. Alleluia. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Come, you are part of the kingdom. Using the prayer adapted by our National Cathedral, a spiritual communion is a personal devotional that anyone can pray at any time to express their desire to receive Holy Communion at that moment, but, which in circumstances, but in which circumstances impede them from actually receiving Holy Communion physically. As we share in communion in one way or another, let us pray. Beloved Jesus, I believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot be at this moment receive you in the sacrament of the body and blood, come spiritually to me in my heart. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Let me never be separated from you in this life or in the life to come. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. May Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill you with his joy and peace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.